Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Rajasthan Global Wires Q2 FY25 post result earning conference call hosted by Batliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call? Please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shailesh Raza from Bhatliwala and Karani Securities, India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Nikita. Uh, uh, good evening, all, and thank you for joining us for all the global market limited second quarter of the 2025 earnings conference call. Uh, during this call, from the management side, we'll be hearing from Mr. Sunil uh, Chaudhary, uh, Chairman and Managing Director, uh, Mr. Yashwardhan, Executive Director of the company, and Mr. Pranay, uh, JNC CFO from Rajasthan, uh, Thailand, and Mr. Sitesh Jain, uh, CFO of Rajasthan, India. I would like to turn the call to Mr. Sunil Chaudhary for the opening remarks, followed by Q. Sir, uh, if you may begin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Silesh, and uh, good afternoon, all dear shareholders, uh, for your interest in Rajatan and sparing your time for this uh, call today. I'm happy to be here with all of you and uh, very happy to share that, you know, your company is continuously growing as uh, indicated earlier. Our focus this year is on uh, maintaining the uh, you know, market share or rather growing the market share. And we have demonstrated that in the numbers. So we have done an impressive uh, volume growth in India of 23% of bead wire. And the total wire sales have grown by 10%. Uh, we have done a very uh, big growth in Thailand, 32% volume growth in Thailand in uh, first half of this year. And that shows uh, this is strong growth in both the regions in volume terms, as well as the positive growth uh, trajectory, thereby ensuring that we have continued to maintain higher market share. Our strong volume growth has led to operating leverage benefits for our India operations. This coupled with the restriction on import from China, uh, and uh, again, uh, has led to improvement in the EBITDA margin in India also, which is close to 18%. Even our Thailand business has reported healthy EBITDA margin of 11 to 12%, led by volume growth and uh, running our operations uh, very efficiently. And uh, let me also remind you that Thailand, we are having a tough competition from China. And in spite of Chinese jumping, we have been able to grow the volume business and also maintain uh, beta margin. So overall, we'll continue to maintain our consolidated uh, annual volume growth so guidance. We have been talking about 20% and I'm confident of achieving that and also maintaining beta at 15, 16% uh, uh, for the year. Uh, this is, uh, and uh, you know, on other than numbers, uh, happy to announce that Chennai has started uh, uh, production uh, and as told you in the earlier calls, it will be in phase manner. So we have done uh, around 1000 tons of sales from Chennai this quarter, which is going to grow in the coming uh, months. And uh, apart from that, uh, our indoor facility has been audited for TPM certification and uh, uh, the final Certification audit will be in November, and we are hopeful of getting, uh, you know, TPM certificate for uh, Tampur facility by end of this financial year. And we are uh, we have started a TPM project in Chennai and Thailand as well. And uh, as you know, quality and the certifications are very important when we talk about uh, selling to multinational companies who re who focus more on quality than the price and uh, there are some positive uh, you know green shoots uh, in terms of getting approvals for exporting to multinational companies in 
north america and also in europe so europe uh, where we had approvals from uh, some customers the business is continuing and we are getting more uh, business from europe and also now very very uh, robust plan to work on increasing exports so there is a separate team which will be continuously working on connecting with customers approaching them uh, offering them value rajasthan offers in terms of green bead wire or reducing the carbon footprint or supplying a better quality material at lower price with all these propositions we have made a very robust plan to approach customers uh, continuously with this uh, i am open to take the questions from here yeah thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a minute while the question queue assembles The first question is from Parth Bhavase from Investec. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, hi sir. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity, uh, and it's you know it's very good to see uh, how you know our uh, operations are ramping up both at you know in yeah. standalone entity as well as Thailand. Uh, so I have a few questions. Uh, First related to Chennai, uh, sir, you indicated that we like made sales of around thousand tons from this unit, and I think our uh, yearly guidance is of around fourteen thousand tons. So, are we on like? Do, do you think that you know it will ramp up that fast, uh, or are we you know cutting numbers over here or guidance over here at, for the Chennai facility? Uh, you know, uh, it is the question of getting approval and start supplying from uh, Chennai. currently whatever 1000 tons we have supplied only some 20% volumes have gone to nearby factories rest of the material we had to ship to a long distance where company incurred a huge freight cost but that was a majboori there was no choice we are uh, you know getting very close to major approvals in uh, chennai and then we will divert the volume to chennai that is the plan and uh, yes uh, it is a challenge to reach 14000 tons this year but we have to reach okay, and we will all work towards achieving that number yeah because uh, that is a commitment we have made to pli uh, yeah right that is the commitment we made to so just in case sir, and then only we will get the pli okay Okay, so if we if we if we are not able to achieve that, like PLI benefit would be like you know, it start it will start from next year onwards. Yeah, yeah. So we will lose the you know the PLI benefit. Uh, I think we have to achieve eighty percent of our commitment. Uh, yeah. So at okay. least eighty percent of our thousand yeah. has to be achieved. Yeah. Okay. And sir, I wanted to know like this uh, Chennai facility. At what point does it break even? No, I think with current uh, expenses and uh, major saving in the transportation cost, it should break even at eighteen to twenty twenty thousand tons volume. Yeah, eighteen to twenty thousand to prime customers. Because again, you know, uh, currently we are supplying to customers in cycle market in Ludhiana, so there is no profit. Okay, but once we start supplying okay. to major customers who who are around our factory. The break even will come down. Yeah. Okay. 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 And sir, uh, like uh, now regarding the macro environment, like uh, you you mentioned, you know how uh, uh, people, you know companies from Dubai and how are they selling? So how is the competition in domestic market and the Thailand market? And and what sort of market share are are, are we you know working with uh, in the domestic as well as Thailand market? Yeah. So last quarter our market share was forty two percent. We also do collect information about. Uh, right the competition and uh, how much is the total uh, sales of bead wire happened in that particular month 
So our calculation indicates that we were at 42 percent of market share in India, and we were little higher than 30 percent in Thailand. Okay, and in Thailand we have competition from Chinese. Okay, in spite of that, uh, we were able to make a decent EBITDA margin in China or in Thailand also. Right. And in so India, yes, the, our competition has also increased capacity. Tata Steel has, is sitting with higher capacity. Yes. One more company has announced major investments. Yeah. So, uh, yes. So those challenges will be there. Okay. Okay. So competition will be stiff. Yeah. Yeah. But we uh, uh, we have lived in competition for entire thirty years of yeah. this business. Okay. Yeah. And sir, like uh, at Chennai or or any other facility, even in Thailand, are we like uh, awaiting any you know uh, approval from a big customer? And and how how and and what is the timeline? Are we expecting to you know uh, get this approval? If if there's any. So in India, we are approved with everyone. It is a question of new approval for Chennai facility, which is happening. So uh, I cannot name, but one major company has given approval to supply. 100% from uh, Chennai facility, which will start this month. Okay, we are starting now, okay. and more. One, I, I can say every 15, 20 days or a month, we will add on one more customer to the list. Yeah. With uh, frankly okay. speaking, the quality of material is perfect. Uh, uh, yeah. There is no problem, but they have a very rigid system of approval which they will follow. And you cannot press customer beyond that point. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So those are my questions. Thank you so much for answering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Participant who wish to ask question may press star one at this time. The next question is from the line of Ishwar Arunugam from I Thought. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Sir, uh, once our uh, Chennai capacity ramp, ramps up, uh, how much uh, can we expect our freight cost to decrease? And uh, are we already supplying to tire companies in Chennai um, who will, from the indoor plant, who will look to switch to the Chennai plant? So, that is my question. Yeah, so currently we are doing cross-country transportation, okay? So in India, typically 65% of tires are made in South India, okay? And we are in the western part of the country or in the central part of the country. So we are paying uh, extra cost of freight of around uh, 3,000 rupees per ton, okay? Which should be saved when we supply from Chennai to those locations. And uh, yes, they will shift. Uh, so uh, our long-term plan is to supply to customers in west and north uh, from our uh, mother facility, which is Peetampur. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, to our uh, customers in south from Chennai facility. Yeah. So, current uh, capacity utilization in uh, India as well as Thailand for uh, yeah, it's, it's almost 80-85% uh, utilization we are running, okay, both in Thailand and India. So do we have any plans to ramp up the capacity, uh, the medium to long term? Yeah, so uh, right now the plan is to ramp up in Chennai, which is the priority. So, uh, and, and also you will see a higher volume in Thailand this year. As I told you in the beginning, we have grown in first half by 32% in volume in Thailand. And uh, so you will see uh, overall, uh, you know, 20% volume growth. Okay. 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 That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question.
The question is from the line of Sanjay Shah from KSA Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening, Yashaji. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, my question was regarding it, it is really uh, uh, a point of appreciation that with this competitive and uh, volatile world market, you have still grown on volume side. So, my, what my question was regarding we have now established our Chennai facility. So, with this new facility, we will be having a good manufacturing base. And so, so now a lot of competition is also coming in, in our midwire uh, uh, business. So, is management of the thought uh, to use this facility for any uh, related products or any growth trajectory from here on in from different uh, products? No, uh, uh, honestly, this facility cannot be used uh, majorly for making any other product. We will spoil the culture, we will spoil the quality culture. We do a small volume of black wire in Pitampur facility. So maybe uh, when the volumes in Pitampur go down, we can add one more product to utilize the capex we have already incurred here. Okay, but I see that for temporary three, four years, we'll have to do. But uh, Chennai, we will not disturb. It is a state of art facility for making bead wire. And uh, we will continue to focus on that. Okay, and Chennai, uh, we are working hard on getting some international approval. So we will also use that capacity for exporting in global market. I appreciate and uh, we recognize that the competition is catching up and major investments are also announced in wire business. But uh, definitely it will take time to get approvals. If Rajadhan is taking so long, then the competition will take will also take longer time. And and we like I was looking at numbers, the tire production in India has grown almost seven to eight percent. Okay. And recently more companies have announced uh, investment. So, uh, it, uh, you know, longer run, the India story still is very strong. Yeah. Achha, thank you. It's really helpful to understand. And uh, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, sir. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star 1 to ask a question. The next question is from Darshini Kumar from SI Investment. Please go ahead, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. I wanted to ask uh, that what impact do Chinese imports still have on our margins? Yeah, Yashodin, would you like to uh, reply this for especially Yeah, so, Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so China has a uh, huge capacity available for uh, bead wire manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in today's scenario, the domestic consumption of uh, bead wire there uh, mm -hmm. is very low. So what from what we understand, tire companies in China are operating at 60%, 70% ratio. Uh, so that's the reason there's a lot of uh, dumping of material happening in the Southeast Asian uh, region from China. Uh, definitely, that's the only factor where we are uh, losing on margins. Uh, there are a lot of places where there are no margins. But uh, to keep our fixed costs in control, uh, we need to keep certain volumes up and running. So we've also been aggressive uh, in taking the volume. But yes, it has a big impact on margins. Okay. And uh, are we planning to apply or uh, are we pursuing to apply for some anti-dumping duty on Chinese imports? Uh, not really. Long back, we had done that exercise. Uh, you know, somewhere we also don't want to uh, do something which does not uh, make our customers happy or which educates our customers. So okay. I don't think that would be the way. But definitely we are talking to the Thai government to have some mm -hmm. relaxation on the import duties applied on wire rod. So 
if if that uh, happens maybe it will make uh, the thing slightly easier for us in time okay uh, i have another question uh, you also mentioned that uh, we received some approvals from uh, customers in europe and north america i wanted to know if uh, like what is the quantity like the volume expected from these customers uh, is going forward yes i think we've been sharing clearly our strategy to uh, be a global supplier to companies mm -hmm. uh, there are companies like bridgestone michelin continental goodyear are the ones that we are in discussion with uh, we are already supplied to their factories in southeast asia and india uh mm -hmm. but because we are an approved supplier since many years uh they are also keen to look at starting supplies in america and europe mm -hmm. uh in terms of volumes definitely it's a very very big potential because like america is one of the largest market uh for us mm -hmm. but growing volumes will take time so i really can't give you any figure in the coming okay. quarters or coming year uh, because okay. approval at these factories take a long time but i'm happy to share that uh, at most of the places we are approved in terms of sample approval at few mm -hmm. places uh, initial trial lots have started going and uh, they have started considering us for limited allocation for next year okay. now that limited allocation will be low but definitely it will be Uh, a good volume to start with okay okay thank you so much yeah thank you the next question is from the line of somin from kotak mutual fund please go ahead sir yeah uh, hi sir you have two two questions on my side first you mentioned that in uh, other than tata steel there is another one large capacity which is being set up uh, broadly what could be the capacity which is coming on other than tata steel so oh, tata steel has already increased capacity last year so they are up and running okay and uh, and new capacity will come from i think rt steel uh, they are setting up a bigger capacity they are shutting down their old plant and shifting their plant and obviously the new factory will have higher capacity uh, i think they are going for a instead of 15000 tons they were doing earlier they will be now going to 30000 tons this is what i hear i don't have the exact information and bansal wire uh, who has recently uh, gone public and has announced uh, uh, bid wire capacity also but he is uh, he is going in for tire cord also for bid wire also and very very big announcements for other products also Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, my second question is on the uh, the cash flows. Now, I believe obviously there will be some upfront inventory and startup costs because of you know uh, the Chennai plant getting commissioned. But when I look at the first six months of this financial year, the operating cash flow profile has weakened significantly because inventory and trade receivables have gone up really very very sharply. Uh, 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 how should we look at second half of the year and you know uh, uh, and and structurally with Chennai plant now? Do you believe what is become to on a on a steady state basis? The working capital requirement would be same, lower, higher, any any color of it. No, I agree with you that it has gone up because of the Chennai startup. Uh, you know the I I'll say Chennai startup has not reached the desired level of volume. Okay, to to start uh, tightening the screws on the uh, outstandings and inventories and i don't know all of that okay we have to give some breather before we uh, start doing all that exercise okay starting the new facility uh, have its own challenges uh, but uh, and, and we have to push material so when you push material obviously the credit cycle gets is spoiled so that is temporary i feel that is temporary and we should be correcting all those uh, parameters in next six months time so this year will be a year of some uh, you know some some uh, uh, variations in all this uh, number yeah 
in all these parameters. Okay, so I mean, it was in that once it hits the 50 percent neutralization, hopefully by the end of this year or the, or the exit quarter for this financial year, 26 FI 26 would be a normalization. Uh, exit number uh, for sales in from Chennai, I am looking at 2,000 tons per annum uh, per month uh, from Chennai. Okay, and and accordingly next year we hopefully want to do 30,000 tons from Chennai. Yeah. Sure. And so my last question in terms of uh, uh, Thailand, obviously the margins have you know recovered over the last you know, one or two quarters, but also uh, when you compare this with maybe a five twenty one or twenty two, we are significantly lower. So you believe there is still some room from current levels profitability to go up, or you believe the Chinese competition will arrest any need for increase in profitability? That's my last question. Thank you. Uh, you know, so I mean. Comparing with 22 financials will not be uh, normal uh, because that was a post-COVID period when China was shut. Supply chains were disturbed, uh, containers were not available, and uh, nobody wants to go back to that situation because before uh, this, there was a COVID, okay, which was worse. Uh, and I, we don't project going back to that high number of EBITDA in Thailand because uh, frankly, we are exposed to global competition, but at the same time, we are very happy that uh, we are making good margins there. If we look at our competitors' balance sheet internationally, whether it is Beckard or Kisswire or a Chinese company, nobody is reach, reaching a double-digit number in EBITDA, okay? While your company is able to do that, that demonstrates our uh, competitiveness and capability to continue to grow. Yeah. Sure, sir. Sure. Point okay. And I think so much all the best. And in business as a management, every time we can't focus only on profitability. Okay. And the cost of sure. profitability, we can't lose the market share because in long term it is the market share which will be useful. Yeah. And whenever tide turns. That's a big volume will give a very big uh, return also. Yeah. Sure, sir. Thank you and all the best for future quarters. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Mayur Milak from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, good afternoon, Sunil uh, Yeah, yeah, Mayur, right. So, two things question here. One that I'm just trying to understand that, you know, uh, we used to look at this as a very big entry barrier for people who really did not have much money to make out of the whole industry. So, correct me my numbers if I'm wrong someplace. One, if the star industry was supposed to be a 90,000 crore industry, the entire bead wire industry in India would be about 1,500 odd crore. 2,000. 2,000 crore, and you're already sitting on 600 to 700 crore of money, I mean, uh, revenues. So what I'm trying to understand is why would somebody like a Tata Steel or Arthi or Pansal would want to invest because at the end of the day, you know, top line to limited years. So where is it making commercial sense for these people to invest new money and make money out of this business? But this is a question you should ask them, not me. Uh, so, but, but what are you saying? Why would somebody come to this field unless, unless, uh, what I'm trying to understand is bunch of only investors and send their gains. I could do this for the industry. Yeah, but uh, you know, I'm sorry, I won't be able to answer this because it is their strategy. Okay. One thing I can tell you for sure that it is a complex business, it is a tough business. Because if Rajasthan is taking time in getting approval in a new facility, okay, we know this business for uh, 25 absolutely, years. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I remember in you spite of that, in spite of that, I'm I'm open to say that we are still learning. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's that's quite humble of you, actually. Yeah, but what is it? What happens is that balance sheet is also an attraction. Right. In the picture, if you go in the picture, then you can buy a ticket and you can buy a ticket. I don't know if you can buy a ticket. 
think you invested i mean of course aapka bhi kepech purana tha but you invested about million crore crore was the plan for 60000 metric ton your green field in chennai right yeah yeah as you mean that even if you make a 15 to 18 percent return at your level after so much experience it will generate about 10 to 100 crore profit for you at 80 percent utilization i'm still wondering why would somebody else really figure i mean the mathematics is coming here because it is spoiling the whole market for everybody right because once you have the capacity everybody will want to do more volumes so what is the how are we really planning to face this for a longer run i mean there has to be a permanent solution to this right no no there can be a permanent solution uh, market has played like this in the past when we started this business we were eighth in the queue okay so and and we have been continuously demonstrating profitable business continuously growing business and uh, yeah so focus focus on quality has given us reward uh, rewards and fortunately uh, we are not uh, leveraging our balance sheet we are not diluting so other parameters also we are very uh, you know rigid on all of them and in longer run uh, this should be successful okay and I, you know of course we have to have a strategy we can't say that competition can't do anything competition uh, we have to have a strategy to emerge as a winner end of the day okay i remember we incurred losses in thailand for many many years and we fought with international players like kiswire in yosung who balance sheets are very strong we have fought with chinese but today thailand is uh, doing very well in the international market yeah so so coming to your thailand facilities uh, yash please come in if uh, so need be so uh, yeah sure i i i i believe this competition at thailand is more from chinese right or this has also started introducing a price cut uh, we were we were at a relevant discount to kiss wires in the uh, thailand market or the european market does that still hold the way it is or even kiss has become more competitive Uh, no definitely kiswire also has become more competitive because since last two years we have also encountered a challenge to them we have entered into uh, customers that they were sole suppliers or they were prominent suppliers so somewhere where we are uh, getting that volume it's putting a back pressure on them to uh, sell to other counters uh, but still i would say it they are very good competition to have Uh, they generally don't dump the material so i would contribute to uh, more to the chinese companies they are really aggressive uh, and uh, china really dumps material at times but definitely there are uh, indications that the domestic market also is reviving uh, there is some production increase that is happening in china uh, i think that should ease out the situation in the coming months Okay, and just one last question. So, Kiswire is selectively competitive. Okay, okay. So uh, he goes to a customer, dumps the price because he wants to sell in that quarter, and again goes back. Uh, and next quarter he will evaporate from there. Okay, but major MNCs they have larger market share at a very good price, and that is our target. We are knocking doors to increase volumes uh, in those counters. So, my uh, dear previous question of uh, capacity and the total market size. Uh, let me also tell you that we are only at about 10% or less than 10% of the world demand. So, uh, you know, our main main focus today is to reach to global counters uh, in in the West and also increase our footprint in Southeast Asia. So, we are still confident of uh, selling this volume. in the coming years and that's why we are not very aggressively structurally changing the product mix or not adding another product and getting confused with it uh, definitely next two years might be a challenge but uh, in the longer run we are still confident of selling 180000 tons from these three locations but right. that's that's next nice year just this one thing from uh, on thailand so we had made inroads with the smallest plant with uh, bridgestone if i remember well are we on track to get the other plants from bridgestone as well yeah so we were approved with the smallest plant uh, with bridgestone in thailand but unfortunately they 
stopped operation in those plant in that plant because it was right in the middle of the city it was a 50 year old plant uh that resulted in a break of 3 months of supply uh but fortunately we have got approval for the biggest factory in thailand which is another factory and uh, there is a final audit that is going to happen in december uh team is coming from japan for the audit and we are already discussing a 20% allocation from that factory uh, starting from first quarter the like calendar year first quarter so jan feb march so definitely so continue year, to supply them some quantity even now yeah, yeah. so we are so, doing uh, limited allocation uh, right now but i meant to say the regular business would start from q4 all right this is this is this is very encouraging all right all right all the best to you guys thank you thanks thank you the next question is from the line of nikunj mehta from magma ventures please go ahead uh, yeah hi yeah. thanks for the opportunity hi sunil and uh, hi hi nikunj so hi uh, i have a couple of questions the first question is uh, in this particular quarter what would be the sales and uh, the absolute uh, in terms of cost from the for the chennai plant as i told you uh, we are ramping up there okay so if we have to achieve 12 14000 in this uh, year remaining 6 months we should be running at a run rate of 2000 tons which is difficult in the next month but uh, we we have to start with 1000 tons like we are doing 1000 tons this month next month should be 1200 1500 and that is how but giving the exact number is difficult yeah oh, uh, no my sorry my question was in this particular quarter what would be the our sales amount yes, from the chennai when is last quarter quarter 2 quarter 2 yes yeah. quarter 2 we have done uh, th- close to 1000 tons of sales which is there in the sales number yeah okay and the subsequent cost uh, the fixed cost uh, opex is not recorded in the pnl uh, is my understanding correct it is still in the cwit no uh, not uh, around uh, you know 60% of the assets are capitalized okay and okay. balance okay. are in the uh, you know wit uh, and gradually everything will get uh, capitalized as we start the more and more machines complete the trial uh, those machines will be capitalized understood understood and uh, once we are at let's say a 2000 uh, ton per month kind of a number uh, then what would be our fixed cost uh, on a quarterly basis uh, opex part just wanted to understand that i think we will have to connect separately for all that information Okay, sure, sure. So sure. you can talk okay. to Vinay and take those numbers. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. Uh, and the other thing which you mentioned is that uh, we are gunning for Chennai to reach fourteen, fifteen, or thousand to get the PLI benefit. So just wanted to understand that uh, in, in case if the demand or the approvals don't come through, uh, is it fair to say that we can uh, uh, the fungibility of the capacity from the Pithampur and Chennai is fungible as in? we can increase in net till 14 15000 just to, just so that the that the pni benefit uh, we kind of receive at the same time indoor utilization will be a bit lower to that extent is that what to hone wala hai wo to hone wala hai that is how okay. we are doing it right okay yeah yeah that is how it is going to happen so like we are still sending lot of material to north india from chennai where approval is not required but we wish that that is stops okay Uh, in the worst scenario that wish will not uh, be fulfilled and will continue to supply from there okay. yeah okay yeah. understood and last question from my side is regarding the bis implication so we uh, uh, as per our last interaction uh, the imports had reduced uh, significantly to uh, i think around 600 tons per month or that uh, number So just wanted to understand uh, the current situation. Is it still uh, the imports are still kind of uh, at the lowest level possible right now? No, so imports can happen uh, for uh, uh, for the tires which are being exported. Okay, and 
tire companies can still import bead wire, but they have to use that wire only for export of tires. So nobody wants to get into that headache. Yes, but to few companies who are 100% exporters or who are into ACZ, they are continue to import from China, but uh, that import is uh, limited quantity. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, as My far as BIS status is concerned, the first company which uh, lost uh, its BIS license was Rajasthan Thailand, and we are still far away from getting that license uh, renewed. Okay. 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 Understood. So uh, my question to uh, in that uh, a follow-up question was that our realization in India when I look at is around 88,809 per ton, uh, and it has remained uh, flattish on a QOQ basis and on a YOY basis as well. So my understanding is that if the imports reduce drastically, then uh, ideally the realization should have improved a bit. Uh, so just I'm not able to uh, connect the two points. If you can just help uh, with your inputs on that. No, so uh, giving the exact calculation may not be possible at this point of time. But uh, in this quarter, we have sold higher quantities to low cost customers also. Uh, and especially from Chennai. Okay. But okay. I've been okay. repeatedly okay. telling on this call also. Okay. So customers who are better priced will take longer time to approve. So this is a transition, okay? And you will see this uh, uh, happening more in the next quarters also, okay? We can't be targeting only the prime customers uh, from a new facility, yeah. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you so much and uh, all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Pranay from deal well please go ahead sir thank you uh with the uh, a desired uh, volume of about 30 tons from chennai next year wanted to understand uh what is the kind of export volume we are looking at uh, particularly towards north america and uh, europe over the next one two years what's the kind of uh, export uh, tonnage and market share if we have any aims on that front you know, our you know projected uh, exports from India is thirty thousand tons in three years' time. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I cannot draw a straight line to tell you that this is what it will happen and this is how it will happen. But yes, mm -hmm. uh, there may be some up and down, but we have to ramp it up to thirty thousand tons in three years' time. That is our target to achieve full production in Chennai. And to achieve overall 18, uh, 180,000 tons of sales. Okay. So uh, there may be some anomalies like Thailand may grow suddenly faster, or sometime you will see that now Chennai volumes have picked up. Everything depends on a lot of uh, you know variables are there. Uh, you have seen in last quarter trade prices for US had gone up to 4,500 dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. which have now come down to $2,500 again, okay? Mm -hmm. So we also have to change our decisions of, uh, you know, price calculations and from which location we can supply to customers. So there are a mm -hmm. lot of dynamic things uh, playing out in the market. Yeah. Okay. And, and the 20% uh, kind of uh, guidance and volume growth, uh, along with the steady 15-16% kind of margin, um, you think that uh, that could be a sustainable trajectory going beyond next year too? Yeah, because uh, it sh it should be there because we by that time we will get more approval from international uh, you know multinational tire companies where prices are much better than what we are supplying to a lot of customers in Thailand, a lot of customers in Southeast Asia, and some customers in India also. Okay. So overall, if we shift 15-20% of our sales to those customers, we will be able to maintain this profitability. And that is the strategy we are working on. Okay. And lastly, uh, are we seeing any green shoots uh, in, in 
the existing large markets like north america europe uh, in terms of not just client conversation or positive uh, audits but also some demand forecast from them and and uh, are we seeing some opportunity in your markets um, or emerging markets like uh, middle east and other areas also where we can so now so middle east Uh, is uh, not a big market, but yes, so then we'll tell you a little bit about North America and uh, global exports. He's, he's uh, directly involved in that that uh, project. Yeah, yes, so then. So America, you know, we've uh, touched a run rate of about 120 tons a month uh, dispatch to two counters. Um, mm-hmm. We've already started supplying material to them. Uh, in Europe, uh, just to give you an update, at one counter we sold about 1,200 tons last year, and for the next year we are projecting a 2,000 ton sales, uh, which will add one more factory uh, in that customer. So there are three factories in Europe. So, okay. You know these are broad numbers uh, that we are looking at. Uh, definitely uh, next year second half, I think. The volume pickup is going to be much faster, uh, from from what I can understand on how the approval process is going on. Correct, and and uh, the price uh, premium would uh, also be at least fifteen twenty percent greater than present uh, to such kind of customers. You know, structurally, structurally the prices are definitely uh, much better. Or uh, 15, 20% higher than Southeast Asian market, but uh, you mm-hmm. know, last two quarters there had been a lot of volatile situation. Uh, you know, one mm-hmm. missile coming from one country to the other, and mm-hmm. you know, I think before that only ocean freight started rising in anticipation of the uh, Red Sea crisis. Mm-hmm. So, you know, ocean freight surcharges, uh, steep increase in the freight cost, somewhere mm-hmm. affects uh, the margin. and mm-hmm. entering into the market you know don't have that strong relationship with customers where we can say okay uh, you mm-hmm. have the extra cost uh, we can't mm-hmm. put in lot of conditions so last mm-hmm. two quarters we had really good numbers for europe but mm-hmm. uh, profitability on excel sheet was much higher and actual mm-hmm. profitability turned out to be much lower now for the next two quarters it's a downward trend so freight mm-hmm. is reducing and it's reducing below the level of what we had considered in the uh, price calculation so mm-hmm. such challenges are also there which need to be incorporated when supplying to europe and america all right yeah, we are living in a complex world but uh, uh, we are uh, having a good strategy also so i appreciate it thanks for the clarity and all the very best thank you thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Namaskar, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I missed the earlier commentary, so pardon me for repetitive question. Uh, when we look at uh, the Chennai unit ramp up, uh, what are the sir uh, costs involved in uh, in the uh, in the quarterly performance? Since uh, I think so, uh, they are not at optimum level. but uh, the production so what are the uh, costs that are absorbed uh, by uh, currently by our pitampura unit can you give a uh, ballpark number no no so we have given in the notes that we have absorbed uh, we have capitalized around 5 crores of the trial run cost okay apart from that there are fixed costs which cannot be uh, capitalized like depreciation uh, finance cost because after Uh, declaring commercial production all those fixed costs are becoming part of the profit and loss account so yes you can do that automatic uh, yourself okay so there is a interest cost which is fixed there is a you know depreciation which is a fixed cost and there are some overheads okay overheads are planned for a big volume but volume ramp up is taking time so and and uh, we had anticipated all this it is not a surprise for us okay any new company new facility for this kind of product will take 
some time to become profitable sir and uh, the the balance amount of 72 crores that is lying in this wic is also pertaining to the same unit or no most of it is uh, chennai maybe some uh, small amount from thailand or uh, pitampur okay so when this that, that will capitalize and then there will be an additional depreciation on the same so yeah yeah but that will be capitalized as the production ramp up so as i told you 70% is already capitalized so remaining 30% uh, on a much higher value yeah. so right. that will be not a big burden okay like building land uh, electrical equipments all the installations other than main you know modular plant and machinery everything is capitalized yeah only the modular machines as and when they get started they will be capitalized yeah so going ahead uh, taking into account the increased volume we have for the first half uh, h2 looks in, in similar lines uh, only or what factors will uh, contribute to the improvement in margins going ahead we are not anticipating very big improvement in margin but uh, because we our focus will be on uh, achieving the volume growth okay. so uh, we are uh, cautiously telling you that uh, margin will be 15 16% only yeah and and volume will be at this level only we are at optimum level right now yeah so uh, like we have done a volume uh, so as i have told in the earlier yeah. we will be we are targeting a 20% volume growth for this year correct sir and sir uh, what are our current maturities for this year our uh, loan what is our loan repayment schedule how much we need to repay this year can uh, hitesh you tell how much loan no, sir loan we have to hello Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Thirty to thirty crore per per year, per the year, and half year already already is gone. Okay. So we have repaid fifteen. Repaid. 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 So this is uh, this is a uh, variable cost line item or what is uh, what is attributed uh, this, to this include uh, items of uh, Rajasthan Chennai. Okay, so uh, this is all about the ramp up part only. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Correct. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you, Sakit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bijal Shah from RTL Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is on your export. So, in Europe and US, uh, when you uh, get new orders, who are the suppliers you are replacing? And uh, I mean, what is the reason for them to switch? Are you offering them much better price, or there is some other reason? and uh, in the same market the way you are facing competition from thailand uh, from china in thailand the same competition is not there in europe and us where you are able to replace other suppliers yes sir yeah so, uh, so the competition remains the same but it's not as severe as southeast asia uh, because chinese prices in those markets are also fairly okay uh to your question of who we will be replacing you know at some counters we would be replacing china because geopolitically there are a lot of companies who are strategizing to develop an alternate source uh mm -hmm. you know we offer uh, 90% recycled steel uh bead wire uh we've mm -hmm. been making since many years in thailand and our scope 2 scope 3 scope 1 uh, emissions are also quite low for that product so there are also factors like this where our carbon carbon emission for uh, bead for metal is much lower than the existing suppliers that they have so you know there are many uh, factors somewhere we will replace china uh, somewhere we will replace a high cost uh, kisar or a bacard who is locally producing there 
and uh, somewhere strategically people want to reduce uh, dependency on china okay okay and uh, and how do you see i mean uh, exports ramping up in terms of percentage of your total vol- total volumes say three years out uh, what kind of total volumes will come from exports in india and thailand so i am saying saying thailand going to europe and uh, us so overall as we mentioned uh, we'll target at uh, 30000 tons uh, of export volumes uh, that is know, with respect to chennai or that is overall from india 30000 tons and maybe from india 30000 tons yeah and from thailand we do an approximate of uh, uh, 15 20000 tons uh, which would remain similar uh, between okay. the plants we might switch, switch. so thailand must okay. might start uh, exporting more volumes to europe and america whereas india might focus on the southeast asian market and vice versa got it got it thank you and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of pass about sir from Investec. Please go ahead. Hi sir. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, uh, I have just one question uh, regarding the imports from China. Uh, the earlier participant had asked a uh, question like you know had asked that you know the bs norms were you know implemented and you mentioned that you know it it's only like it's 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 only for you know uh, for indian sales. Uh, uh, so uh, can you just uh, highlight the number or like how it has you know uh, like you know changed over like maybe last 6 months from 600 kt to now what it would be no no so china was lately exporting a bigger quantity to indian market right they were dumping and government has uh, you know made the, the quality control order is very effective and it is not for bead wire they have done it they have done it for all the steel items okay and fortunately okay. bead wire also falls under the same category so it was also hit by the same bullet okay uh, mm-hmm. so the volumes which had gone up to 3000 tons a month or 3500 tons a month in one month have come down to 4 5 600 tons maximum import numbers we see now yeah okay Perfect, sir. Yeah, that that answers my question. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I, I think uh, uh, we have uh, finished. Uh, if there are no more questions, can we request for the closing remarks? Yes, sir. Yeah, just to go ahead, Mr. Raja, please go ahead. Sure. Uh, thanks for attending the session. Uh, Especially thank the Rajat and team for their time. Uh, so, Mister, would you like to make any closing comment? Yeah. So, uh, keep watching Rajat and and thank you for your continued uh, uh, interest in Rajat and. We are on our side as management working very hard to you know continue to grow and continue to profitability. But uh, and also have a strategy in place to. compete in local market as well as in international market and in thailand market but it has been a good experience to uh, run this company and uh, bringing it here and i see lot of possibilities of growth from here for next uh, couple of years so stay connected stay keep watching thank you very much yeah yeah thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you so much patliwala and karani securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines <laughs>